again for another day, another Saturday. I want to appreciate God for all that He has done, He is doing for us uh, with respect to our marriages. Uh, welcome again to this class, marriage online class, online marriage class. I want to thank you if you are a married person that is listening or watching this. It will be to all of us to a brother, to a sister. Um, it is not about where we are. It's not about Africa. It's about what is happening in general. Our marriages are under attack. You know, I said something last week about we, 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 we throughout, the, um, throughout the particular months, we, we, we prayed prayed about our marriage. I think, I think the theme of that uh, program was marriage warfare. It was just praying about you know, powers that be, I would say, rest not against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers. Um, we are praying rigorously about our family. And then uh, God said also, as we are praying, he said, there's a need. I think the challenge today about uh, marriages is, uh, apart from the fact that some of us are lazy, to work on our marriage, some of us don't have an idea about what we need to do. Some of us came uh, with this mindset of this what marriage is all about. And then, unfortunately, what we met on ground is different from what we know, or what culture has taught us, or what you know we came into the marriage with our own ideology about what marriage is all about. And unfortunately, churches, except churches, or except when some churches have special programs. And that's why you see when they are, then they teach them about what marriage entails or when challenges come, when expectation does, when expectation does not come to pass, the things that you need to do. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, we have, we're having this uh, online marriage class or marriage class online, whichever way you want to uh, put it. Uh, because uh, my testimony is so, is so, I'm just speculating with some of you. I didn't do, I didn't gamble, I didn't do trombo, trombo, but I have so many issues in my marriage then that even the, the people that uh, were supposed to cancel me a rights, didn't cancel me a rights. They were saying what is not scriptural and then they direct, they, they cancel me wrongly. I made so, so many terrible mistakes and there was nobody to teach me again. And there and then, in this part of the world, then there was really no book, no specified, no specific concerning uh, marriage. So there's a lot of blunder that I made. And I, that's why I said, um, in this journey, we are here to learn from each other. And that's why I want to encourage you to drop the comments, um, the comment section, whatever it is. We are not here to judge anybody. Because there's a lot that is happening in marriages today that people are keeping quiet. And there's a lot that we'll be talking about. We'll break so many barriers. We'll talk about some things. We'll talk about sex. We'll talk about food. We'll talk about money. We'll talk about in-laws. We'll talk about a lot of things um, that people are afraid to talk about. Um, to the floor of God, we'll talk about the essence of talking about it for us to learn. Uh, last week started something uh, about what marriage, what makes a marriage. And then we talked about, I mean, to realize that uh, our marriage is under attack and there are challenges that marriage is a gift from God. Marriage is not about culture. Culture is a part of marriage, but it's not about culture. It's about God, the originator of uh, the institution called marriage. And that's why I always tell people when you have issues in your marriage, you go back to the originator, you go back to the person that originated uh, marriage. You know, marriage is a challenge. Marriage is a challenge because there are circumstances that you do not know what to do. But sometimes people feel that they know everything. You don't know everything. And when you don't know, you don't know. You don't know. You can't know everything. So one of the things from the scripture that, that uh, we open, started with in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 21, There's a, there was a problem. There was a problem, Adam was busy, but he was alone. And the, pro 
problem was because he was busy. And the, how busy the schedule was there in the Garden of Eden was still lonely. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a help as suitable for him. So the problem was, he needed a helper. And there was a solution. The solution was a partner who completes. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. Now while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's legs and closed up the place with friends. Then the Lord God made a woman. Made a woman. So if you have missed that class, please go and look for it again because it's important for you to understand because we are building, we are building this journey. So if you yes, a, you can learn today, but it's good for you to at least the first one so that you won't be like confused that we are building, we are building a foundation. I'm saying that we did foundation before. So what is the marriage of man doing about some of you? Your challenge about your marriage is you have a faulty foundation. You do have an idea. Now, so from the story of in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 18, we learn that God planned the human heart for love, for marriage, for companionship, home, and children. The only thing that man brought with him out of Eden was marriage. The angel blocked the way back in, but thank God Adam and Eve came out together. Marriage, even in the fallen world, is not truly only matrimony. And the only touch of paradise will ever know this side of heaven. So we also learn that marriage is older than the church, the school, or the human government. It is God's first gift to human race. It is God's first gift to humankind. So is it, is, it, is it wrong for a young man to feel desire for a young woman? No. Is it wrong for a woman to desire the companionship of a man? No. Sometimes men and women make pure, you know, poor choices and leave to regret it. But the desire of a man to spend his life with a woman and the desire of a woman to spend her life with a man, that is not wrong. So far from it. That desire is placed in the human heart by God. By God. To understand the foundation to where we are laying today, it's about what makes a marriage. There was a problem. God gave the solution. And then the third part that I want to share with you today is the design. The design in the marriage designed in the marriage for intimacy and transparency. That same scripture in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 to 25. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Now from the closing verse of this passage, we see, you know, it teaches us that marriage is not man-made. It teaches us that marriage is not a man-made institution which you can discard whenever we like. <laughs> but unfortunately, we know that the narrative today, even among Christian Christians, is that any little uh, issues in the marriage, people easily discard their marriage and that's not godly. That's not godly. Now understand the design of marriage. For this reason, a man, not a woman, not the one that turned himself to a man, will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Not another woman. Because these days people easily break the scriptures. Now, from the ancient story of Adam and Eve, we learn God's plan. One man and one woman joined in marriage for life. So we need to teach these things to our children and to encourage them to look forward to the day when they too will be married. 
Now, in these two verses, we find the four essential components of Christian marriage. And that's what we're going to conclude today. Before I continue, please and please and please and please and please, I beg you by God's mercy. Um, I always, people that are familiar or followers of our ministry, they know that we are not looking for uh, views. And it's good to have views, good to have members, watching you, all those things like that. But it's good for we, 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 our desire is for us to have people that are following us, people that are, that are feeling our impact, people that are, we are impacting. Not just have 100 views, 1 million views, and they will have impact in their lives. So, and that's why we always encourage people to help us to share because this message needs to be heard. And that's you doing the gospel. That's you, you know, fulfilling this, this scripture that says, Go ye into the world. It's a command. Go. So it's not until when you share the handbill, so when you help us to share this content. And the reason is so that a brother, a sister, a couple, a home can be saved. That is the essence. That's good that God will bless you in Jesus' name. The best reward that I can ever get is God. God can, he, will, can, he will pay you beyond what you are expecting. God bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. So in this concluding part of the scripture, in these two verses, we find the four essential components of Christian marriage. Do not forget, this is a class of marriage online class or online marriage class and we started we have started we have started this class with what makes a marriage and the focus scripture is in genesis 2 18 to 25. number one is leaving leave his spirit number two cleaving be united to his wife number three intimacy become one flesh. Number four, transparency. Naked and not ashamed. Now, understand that living means breaking away from your parents to establish a home of your home. To establish a home of your home. Cleaving means being glued, gone together, so tightly no force can tear you apart. So you wonder where that scripture came from, what God has joined together, let no man put us under. Intimacy involves growing together over the years so that while you are still two people in a deep way, you have become one flesh. Intimacy means you are free with each other. Intimacy means you have nothing to hide. Intimacy means you are vulnerable, open to each other. Now, I hope you are getting these things because these are the foundational truth about what marriage is. Transparency means having a relationship built on such trust that you can let down the barriers and allow another person to know you deeply. Know you deeply means know you bodily, know you spiritually, know you by soul. Now, in our world, we can't walk around naked. Because I want you really, I want you really to understand and they are both naked. Now the naked the nakedness there is not it's not about walking what you walking around naked. What will it be like to go to church any day or a Sunday if everyone came naked? The divine thought is hard to digest. Now nakedness is the blessing we can hardly bear. We like to be noticed, we eat for someone to stare at us. It makes us uncomfortable. As if a stranger is trying to you know, peer into our soul. But in marriage, a part of the original transparency can be regained in the security of a lifetime commitment. A husband and a wife can relax and feel comfortable together. And slowly, the walls can begin to come down. It is the work of decades. I counsel people and tell them that marriage, you know, there's a saying that, that goes to the room was not built in the day. It 
it's not something you start in today and then expect it to begin to happen. And that's why we have been taught over the years that marriages, marriages are in stages, are in phases. The beginning, the middle, and the ending. There comes a time where you'll be wondering, how, why did I marry this person? Those periods are the periods where you give yourself to bonding. The issues that you don't expect because the two people involved in the marriage are either have different childhood, have different background, have different you know, tribal, so many things, ethnicity, and then you are coming together. What do you expect? Now, these things are simple to understand if there's a willingness on the part of the party involved in the marriage. So, in marriage, when it, with the original transparency can be retained, in the security of a lifetime commitment, a husband and a wife can relax. They can be comfortable with each other as they grow together. As they grow together. It's a work in progress. It's a deliberate, intentional work in progress of decades. And that is why you can be married 20, 30, 40, 50 years and still discover new things about each other. As a matter of fact, let me boast about one of my fathers and a mentor, Dr. Olumide Manuel. He said, you can never finish knowing your partner. You can never finish knowing your partner. And that's why I always encourage, encourage couples. When you get the basic about Christianity, when you get the basic about home, when you get the basic about that person, that's all you need. The others can build on it. Praise God. So as we go in this class, continue in this class, understand. Again, let me repeat. That is why you can stay with somebody. You know, sometimes it baffles me. Somebody is five years in marriage, so not, not five years, that's even extreme. Somebody is two, three years in the marriage, and they are telling you you are done because we have issues in the marriage. Some things are coming up. I say they are done in the marriage. And I ask myself, how many years are you? Then you are now cleaving, you are gumming yourself, you are releasing yourself to a particular man or a woman, and you don't expect issues to come up. You know, Christians, some Christians you know, lie to themselves. Lie to themselves. Again, let me pause by saying, I know there are so many questions uh, for those who are listening, who are watching me. Please don't hesitate to drop your question at the comment section. I will, I will, I will love if you not if you would not DM me or drop it, drop, drop questions for public consumption. But if uh, the challenge, the issues in your marriage is private, okay, you can DM me for those questions. Now I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering these days. One, two years in the marriage, there are issues in the marriage, fertility, you know, sickness, money, and then you see some people say they are done in marriage, they have talent, you thought this one is too much for me. And then, as I Google, I said, marriage is not for boys, marriage is for matured, matured, not matured, not maturity by age, but matured in terms of intellect, matured in terms of wisdom, matured in terms of strength, not age. But I've seen some people who are older in age, but they are not mature, they are immature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, understand you are recapturing some of, some of what Adam and Eve experienced in the beginning. That's what it means at a very deep level to be naked and not ashamed. In other words, what I just tried to explain to you is about the word nakedness. And my Bible says they are both naked and not ashamed. This kind of marriage is possible only when there is an exclusive commitment to another person. These days, people are not committed again. Because if people are committed, you won't be lying, you won't be hiding, you won't be cheating, you won't be doing, you won't be selfish towards your partner, you won't dishonor your partner. You won't do things that you know as a child of God that you ought not to do. And we see it often. And we see it often. 
that's my time for today. Please, I want to encourage you, help us to share again. I want to encourage you to follow us on the social media platform so that uh, every program of ours, you can get notified about it on so, uh, TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. On YouTube, we have special programs that we have. We have month, uh, some, mostly every month, uh, some, uh, sometimes every week. So I'm sure you see, I've been seeing the e flyers on the screen. Please follow us so that you can join us. For, listen, the, the times to which we are, we Christians need to strategize. When it comes to our home, there are teachings, there are, there are books, there are, there are things that you need to keep feeding yourself with. Don't forget, to, to for your marriage to be successful, there's a need for the people involved to be committed. Committed to feeding themselves with the right information, to the right teaching. Uh, I tell people that knows me that I feed a lot. I don't joke with feeding, no, feeding on the right material. Feeding on the right, they are pastors, they are, they are men of God that I don't joke with. And I celebrate them any day, any time because uh, they feed me when it comes to different areas, marriage, when it comes to uh, no, uh, wealth, when it comes to money, when it comes to relationship, when it comes to goal. There are people that I feed on, that I feed on because I know in the words of TJ Jakes, the day stop, stop learning that they start dying. God bless you once again. I will see you again next week, uh, Saturday.